GM Brad Treliving and the Toronto Maple Leafs have some major decisions to make this offseason, including are they going to resign Tyler Bertuzzi? Today, we're going to dive into some top candidates who could replace Tyler Bertuzzi if they decide to let him walk in free agency. Also, we're going to dive into Connor Bedard and how he's impacting Team Canada at the World Hockey Championship. So you're not going to want to miss this episode of Hattrick HQ, but before we get into it, we got to say that 86.1% of you guys watching these videos aren't subscribed to the channel. So, if you're looking to stay up to date on everything that's happening around the hockey world, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you here on the channel. But, with that said, let's get right into the first topic of the video today, which is Bedard is shocking everyone at the Worlds. And yes, if you have been watching Team Canada at the World Hockey Championship, this may be one of the best Team Canada teams we've seen at the World Hockey Championship in quite some time. And the reason that this team is playing so well is the young stars they have there. And the, of course, that top one being Connor Bedard. I mean, this guy is being, you know, I guess you could say Captain Canada. Obviously, that's John Tavares right now. But he is being, he's leading this Team Canada team in points, goals, everything. And he's just been playing some phenomenal hockey over there. At such a young age, was he like 18, 19 years old uh, at the time I'm recording this video? So, I mean, this is just great to hear from Connor Bedard. Obviously, we know this kid is supposed to be the next big thing in the NHL. He had a great rookie season, and, and now it looks like he's just improved and improved, and it is showing that he can play at a high level in these world tournaments. And if we just take a look at his stats here, I mean, in four games, he has six points. Five goals, one assist, uh, and shooting pretty efficiently too on 13 shots with five goals is very impressive. He has one game-winning goal as well. And obviously, Connor Bedard, he was the talk of the town this season. He was the rookie. He's the, you know, the next big thing in the NHL. And to see him, you know, obviously Chicago not make the playoffs and him want to go play uh, for Canada is huge. Obviously, we've seen him with the, with the, at the World Juniors, stuff like this. But now we're seeing him at the World Hockey Championship and he's excelling over there. I mean, if you've watched any of these Team Canada games, I know they're on early in the day, but... They are fun to watch. I mean, Connor Bedard, he just weaves in and out. He crosses people up like he's on the basketball court. Uh, and he just is beneficent p p passing and playmaking. I mean, he only has one assist to show for it, but he's setting up multiple scoring chances a game by just his playmaking ability alone. It looks like, you know, he's improved so much, which is crazy to say, uh, in just one season in the, in the NHL. I mean, we see this guy just weaving in and out, using his hands, those great, you know, dangles that he has to get by his opponents, obviously using his speed to his advantage as well. And, and it has really proven well for Connor Bedard here in this World Hockey Championship. Like I said, I mean, he's looking for pass and he, he has one assist to show for it, but he also has five goals to show for it as well. I mean, if he, if he can't find an open lane for a pass, you know Connor Bedard's going to rip it. And his shot right now is unreal. I mean, he's picking corners like a, a NHL veteran. I mean, it's crazy to see this kid at such a young age have such a big impact on Team Canada and see how uh, drastically his game has changed over just the course of one season and to see... Now playing in the World Hockey Championship with some of the best players in the world, him dominating is huge and it's just great to see. I think the, the ceiling for Bedard is so high and just off this season alone, he has improved drastically. And I think next season is really going to be the season we see Connor Bedard get to the top and be in the conversation of one of the best players in the NHL. I think once that Chicago team develops a little bit and they become a powerhouse. We're going to be looking at this guy as one of the best players in the NHL, and we're looking at him right now as one of the best players on a stacked Team Canada roster, which is unbelievable. I'm really excited for Connor Bedard. I mean, if you haven't had a chance to watch him during this World Championship, make sure to go check out the highlights. Tune into their next game because this guy is a treat to watch. Uh, not lying to you there, but uh, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on Connor Bedard. Do you think he's going to be, you know, one of the best players in the NHL next year? Let me know down below in the comment section. We're going to get into the second topic of the video today, which is. 
These Bertuzzi replacements are amazing. And yes, of course, the Toronto Maple Leafs are out of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, if you if you haven't missed that, if you missed that, you've been living under a rock. And now we're starting to look at what the Toronto Maple Leafs need to do this offseason to bring back a better team for next year. And obviously, they have a number of people expiring, uh, UFAs, they have RFAs. And one of those UFAs that that a lot of people are, are speculating that maybe they will resign, maybe they won't resign, is Tyler Bertuzzi. It's kind of up in the air right now of where they stand on Tyler Bertuzzi. And, I mean, obviously, he had a $5.5 million contract going into this season. He he played, you know, a decent... I think he played solid with the Toronto Maple Leafs this year. I think it was, like, 45 point, points, or it might have been higher than that. Sorry if I, I got that wrong. It's just off the top of my head here. But... You know, if he decides to walk and go to a different team in free agency, the Toronto Maple Leafs and Brad Living are going to have to find some replacements. And I think it might be their best option. I think Bertuzzi is a great player. I think he played very well for this Toronto team this year. And if you can bring him back at a decent salary, I think you do because he's one of those guys who just puts it all on the line for your team every night. But there are two guys here that, all I personally think, and I've seen a lot of people, uh, Leafs fans online, talking about these guys as replacements for Pertuzzi. And the first one of these guys is Chandler Stevenson from the Vegas Golden Knights. And they say here, obviously, Stevenson popped off offensively last the last two seasons, registering over 50 points three times and hitting the 60-point mark twice. And he's shown that he can play uh, with highly gifted offensive players. While his goal scoring may not be there, he's an effective defensive-minded playmaker. And he would, um, you know, have the ability to establish an attack with his speed. He's also great on the power play uh, and also has been very solid for uh, the penalty kill killing unit for this Vegas team this year. Uh, they also go on to say here, uh, obviously the Golden Knights want to keep Jonathan Marsh's show, so they're going to have to free up some cap here to bring this guy back to Vegas. So this kind of leaves Chandler Stevenson in limbo uh, and, you know, saying that he is the target to hit the open market as a strong vet at 30 years old with, with obviously, Stanley Cup experience. Uh, they say it could be a great addition for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, they say he could be a strong middle six role player that can bring in around his previous cap hit of $2.75 million. And obviously... I think Chandler Stevenson is going to go a bit higher than 2.75 million here. He just had, you know, two 60-point seasons with this year having a 51-point season. He's a guy, like they say here, he's not going to score the goals. He will tuck one in every now and then, but he is such a great playmaker. He's good at setting people up to score the goals, great at creating scoring chances. And the big thing to look at Chandler, Chandler Stevenson is his the defensive side of his game. He's such a great 200-foot player, and he's great on the forecheck. He's great on the back check. And I really do think that implementing him into this Toronto Maple Leafs lineup would be uh, amazing for this team. Even, you know, obviously he plays center. So you maybe move him in, like they say, in the middle six role, maybe on the third line center, maybe the second line center. Maybe you bump JT down to the third line and, and see how that goes. But I really do like Chandler Stevenson as a pickup that the Toronto Maple Leafs can get. And from my prediction and from what I'm seeing people saying what a contract would look for him, I think you're looking at a, maybe a three, four year deal at around probably four to 4.5 million. I think that's my range. You're getting him a little bit cheaper than you had Tyler Bertuzzi last season. And he has proven to be such a crucial piece to this Vegas Golden Knights team uh, over the last, was it five seasons? He's been there since 1920. So uh, I think this guy could be the piece th that the Toronto Maple Leafs need going into next year. Obviously, the future of Mitch Mariner is kind of up in the air. They don't know if they're going to trade him. They don't know if they're going to keep him. Uh, I think it's all going to, you know, uh, lay on what Craig Berube, their new head coach, thinks. They think he can work with them. Does he think he can't work with them? And then that's going to be that decision. So even getting a, a replacement like this, like Chandler Stevenson, he's going to help out on the defensive end as a forward. He's going to play make. He's going to get a lot of assists for your team. I really do think that this is a great option that the Toronto Maple Leafs should look at for this upcoming offseason. But there is another name on this list, a list that you, a name that some of you guys may be familiar with. And that is obviously Anthony Duclair. 
And Anthony DeClaire is a guy we talked about around trade deadline that was speculated to go to the Leafs. And as they say here uh, in this article, they say uh, the Leafs want to bring in a player with the ability to provide some some consistent secondary scoring. Uh, scoring Anthony DeClaire should be at the top of their list. Uh, they say obviously splitting the season between San Jose and, and Tampa Bay. DeClaire finished with 24 goals and 42 points. Uh, and they say... Uh, uh, that they had him as a potential trade option, and now you know he's about to hit the market. So why not circle back on a guy that you thought you you were looking at during the uh, trade deadline? And as we look here, Anthony Duclair, obviously he has no struggle finding the back of the net, as they say here. Uh, he's uh, ha makes some uh, great plays. His amount of speed to get around defense e easily is the very upside of his game. He isn't the biggest player, but he has the strength to push, push his way through uh, his opportunities, and he would have that advantage over Bertuzzi instantly. And yes, obviously, uh, Anthony DeClaire is a guy who uses his speed to his advantage. I mean, he's such a quick player out there on the ice, and he can bury goals. Like we just seen, he had 24 goals this season, and I think, you know, and that's with half the season spending, uh, spending half the season with, you know, a, a lackluster San Jose Sharks team. So if you give him a full season here playing with the star-studded talent that the Toronto Maple Leafs have, I think his numbers will just jump up and he would be such a great fit between or next to a guy like Austin Matthews. I think him using his speed and Matthews obviously being the goal scorer he is, we've seen Matthews be a, a great playmaker as well at times. And I think if you can get Matthews, you know, maybe looking for the shot, people are kind of, you know, Two two men and him off like there's two guys kind of shifting over towards his side. He finds Duclair on the other side for once. He it's going to go in the back of the net. We've seen this many times with Anthony Duclair, and I think having two elite goal scorers on your top line would just be fantastic for this Toronto team. And I really do think that he'd be a great fit with Matthews because I think that speed would be key, and it would just be just such a great line. But they do go on to say here that uh, obviously he's coming off his recent contract where it was around $3 million. Uh, They say it would, he would definitely be an upgrade over Bertuzzi. He could get an increase of around $4 million. So you get him up, bump him up from 3 to $4 million over three years. Kind of similar deal to Chandler Stevenson. And that would be something to consider to get a strong secondary score on the roster. Duclair would be an ideal middle six forward that can be a strong uh, second or third line option that can play with pace and speed. And like I just said, I, I think that you could e easily test to clear up in this top line with Austin Matthews, uh, obviously with Mitch Marner, depending on, you know, how that goes. But I think he'd be a great fit with Matthews. Obviously, we've seen Matthew Nyes be a great fit up there on that top line. So maybe they want to keep that going. But we have a new coach uh, in the ranks now. So maybe he's going to sh shift that up altogether. We, we don't know. But... Uh, all the same, I think Anthony Duclair will be the perfect fit and the perfect upgrade over a guy like Tyler Bertuzzi because obviously Tyler Bertuzzi's game is different than Duclair. Du Bertuzzi has that chippiness, that, you know, extra, that type of play to his game. Yes, he can play make. Yes, he can put goals in the back of the net, but he has that physicality that it, it just makes him such a great player. But on the other hand, uh, with Anthony Duclair, he's a guy who can put the puck in the back of the net consistently, and he's a guy who plays with a lot of speed. And I think this may be what this Toronto Maple Leafs team was missing, was that speed. I mean, we've seen Noah Gregor, when he gets into the lineup, how much speed he has and how much that impacts the Toronto Maple Leafs for him just b bursting down the wing, getting past defenders, and, and, you know, getting a great scoring chance out of that. And if we can get a guy like Anthony Duclair, who can do that consistently in a second line, maybe third line role, I think that would be the perfect fit for this Toronto Maple Leafs team. And I think that having him even on this second line with a guy like John Tavares and William Nylander would be phenomenal because we obviously know William Nylander has that speed as well. And having those two guys link up could be something special in Toronto. But uh, like I said, if I was to go after one of these guys and, and someone that I personally, if I was a GM and you put two of these guys on the table and said, we're going to pick one of them. Who are you signing? I'm picking Anthony to clear. I think this guy, obviously Chandler Stevenson has that defensive side of his game, but 
Anthony Duclair provides that great secondary scoring. He's going to get you, you know, between 25 to 30 goals. And I think this would be the perfect pickup. You're going to get him in at a little bit cheaper than a guy like Chandler Stevenson. And it'd be such a great player and would fill that type of role that Toronto's been missing over these la uh, oh, oh, over last season. And I think it would be really fun to see. But I want to hear your guys' thoughts down below in the comment section. Who would you pick? Chandler Stevenson, Anthony DeClear? Let me know down below. I think these both these guys are great options, and they're people that you should have on your radar for the Toronto Maple Leafs coming up for free agency. Uh, so like I said, make sure down below. Let me know uh, what do you think. Stevenson or DeClear, or maybe there's somebody else that you have on your mind. Let me know down below in the comment section. We're going to get into everybody's favorite topic here on the channel, which is comment of the day. And the comment of the day today uh, goes to... Uh, Daniel, shout out Daniel, uh, day one supporter here on the channel. Uh, we love seeing your consistent support uh, on the channel down below. Uh, Daniel, uh, it means uh, the world to myself and the two marks here on the channel. Uh, he said, glad the Leafs uh, got him talking about Craig Brube. He says, I just got hope he brings in fresh faces beside him. I love the fact that he will hold players accountable. It, it's what needs to happen. And Daniel, Buddy, I couldn't agree more with you. This is something we talked about a lot when Sheldon Keefe got fired, that they need a coach that's kind of hard-nosed, that will, you know, hold players accountable for their actions, not just let it all slide. This is exactly what you got in Craig Berube, and I think that Leafs fans should be really happy with this signing because it's going to make, uh, it's going to do wonders here in Toronto for this Leafs team. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure down below, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, you know, if you're not subscribed to the channel already and you want to keep up to date on everything that's happening around the Leafs and around the hockey world, make uh, make sure down below and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything. Also, while you're down there, leave a comment, even just comment where you're watching from. We love seeing where you guys are tuning in from. You might be featured on the next comment of the day. And if you want to check out a video uh, Mark did yesterday talking about the Craig Berube signing, it'll be popping up on your screen right now. But as always, I've been your host, Casey. Keep your stick on the ice.